to this session, we're going to be talking about um, horror from beyond the stars, so science fiction and horror. And uh, you know me, I'm Jeanette, and I'm here with Annette, and we rhyme. And we're going to talk about <laughs> science fiction horror, the readings for this week, uh, defining science uh, horror, science fiction horror. Uh, talking about, uh, we're going to talk about the short stories Black Destroyer, who goes there, and we're going to talk about a little Lovecraft and a little bit of the Alien film. So, Annette, how would you define science? fiction horror this kind of overlap if you had to tell someone what it was about mm, i think it's a really fine line of um of horror and science fiction i just think it's, it's there's not there's like a very gray line there that you have to kind of cross over um, yeah yeah i definitely agree i think um i was listening to a, a youtube video lately where it was like about how how media scares us and it would define horror really well for me where it's like art is supposed to um, evoke some kind of feeling or response and horror um, is about evoking responses of fear and terror. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, I can definitely see the overlap with science fiction um, because space is scary. Um, I don't like space. I, I, I don't think it wants us there. It's, it's dark. <laughs> There's no food. When you have to bring your own food and oxygen, it's just not a good thing. Um, that and the fact that if you kind of pushed yourself off something, you would keep going forever and ever and ever until you were met with equal force with some, you know what I mean? That's yeah. horrifying to me. So I think there's definitely an overlap there that I never really explored. Cause like I, I was saying earlier, um, science fiction to me was always just like space and positive things about the future, not necessarily what's scary about the future. So I don't know. What do you think about that? See, yeah, with like what we just said, I just think I associate it with horror. Like it's just scary. That's like, fascinating because <laughs> what? Well, because you said you're into Star Wars, definitely. Yeah. But what, what were those early things that made you associate science fiction with horror? I'm gonna I'm gonna mention it because it, it was actually on the sci-fi the horror um, encyclopedia part. It was the fly. Oh my oh. God! <laughs> Where he's like, help me, help me! Oh, oh my God! God. That, that movie has haunted me my entire life. But, I'm, yeah. but the thing is, is I didn't realize that it was science fiction until I got older. You know, like you, you just think, oh my God, a man can be a fly, like, like you know, and it just like his voice like haunted me. <laughs> It's funny that you mentioned that because I actually have never seen it because I'm in love oh with Jeff God. Goldblum and I don't want to like sully that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love him from Jurassic Park. He's a beautiful man. I saw him in Ragnarok, uh, Thor Ragnarok. He's great. And but I, I more and more I'm like I gotta watch it because yeah. <laughs> and I think it was like you know you're I was raised in the '80s, early '90s, and I'm like oh my God, that is like the movie. And then like the Blob and. And I had some other things written down. Um, the thing, like those are all the things that was just like those kind of like, you know, that has set my my pace on what I thought science fiction was. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, because yeah, my husband would talk about the blob too because I hadn't seen it, and then he showed oh it to God. me. He's like, "Are there was another movie? I forget what it's called. Um, where it's like, are you eating it or is it eating you? Do you remember what's the what the stuff? Okay, that is that science fiction. Would we call that? Science? whatever but yeah, but yeah like the blob and stuff like that um so yeah no i think from the very beginning for you it's been about yeah. like being in space and being scared and i think there's a lot about the unknown that is really terrifying um because you know we're just one galaxy and we have no idea what's out there mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so let's talk about a little bit about the stories Do, is there one that you want to start with first or that you like the best out of what we had to read this week um i think the um the Lovecraft one was was pretty good. Um, yeah. I it it was it was definitely interesting, you know. And then yeah, like, so at the end, about that? Then, well, at the end when like he turns into what, or like he finds that he's related to all those people, and like he's like gonna go back and like live in that horror again, but now he's not scared of it. I think that just kind of weirds me out. But yeah, because it starts off like he's on an what is it an architectural like tour thing, yeah. yeah he's backpacking through of all places you know the the northeast yeah. um <laughs> which is funny because it's like all concentrated there and like so is stephen king stuff like much later so 
that's it has to be like a historical figure thing the there or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's like he's like doing a tour, and then he's he's like stumbles upon this place, and he's like, yeah, let's go to this place. And every I love how everybody is like, they don't want you there. Like, yeah, they, go, they let me go. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go anyway. It's like I just every part of me that ever watched a horror film is just screaming. It's, that's the one. Like, yeah, don't go in there. Go. Go the door. Yeah. And then it's like, don't talk to these people. And then he gets like a guy drunk, and he starts telling him stories about um, the fish people, essentially mm -hmm. um, of, of Innsmouth, where it's like these people who live in the deep have made a deal with uh, the the. The, is it Marsh? It's Obed Marsh, it's Obed right? Marsh, the, ca yeah. the captain. Um, he's made a deal with these like un like sea people essentially, and he's allowing them to interbreed with the people who live in Innsmouth. And for that, they have like I guess a lot of fish. Like <laughs> yeah. they have a lot of they they get the, even though everything else is dried up in the ports around them. There's like a lot of fishing going on. Um, they're bringing up these jewels from the deep, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's this like what? weird, un the, like, yeah. a, like some type of metal that they couldn't explain. So then you're like, okay, are you aliens? Are you like, is aliens coming from underneath the sea? Not yeah, not what's not going space? on? <laughs> and then they're using it kind of like because there are those hooded figures who wear it, like that have replaced the the Masonic temple. And I don't know, Masons are scary enough by themselves. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then it's like whatever. Oh, was it Dagon or whatever? I forget what it's called. Yeah, um, they. Something like that. Yeah, Something like that. Something like that. But they were just like, yeah, this is now the this of this, and it's just horrifying. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think? What do you think Lovecraft is? Wh how do you think he's deploying science fiction uh, in that story, or or how do you think he's melding science fiction with horror to get to get a response out of us? Number one, it's just to make you scared of something that you don't know, and it's like you know, but it's also in in the area that you live in or you know not technically but it's just like in the u.s or whatever so you know taking like a common area that we know as new england you know or you know up north or whatever and then it's like oh it is somewhere it's accessible that you could actually go to if you wanted to see these type of things because they are real and yeah you know, definitely. Creating like oh the bump in the night type thing like that's real it's right next door to you you just don't know about it yeah, and I feel like there's, at the beginning of the story, like, there's all this effort that goes into, like, the cataloging of it. Like, he's writing it down. He's go. He, this is not just you got somebody drunk in a bar who's, like, telling tales. It's, like, he's going to uh, antiquarian societies, and he's taking notes, and he's, like, and, and in many ways, he reminds me of me because, like, I got a PhD or whatever in this stuff, and it's, like, research, you know? So there's a lot of it that just... Um, it, it lends it like credence. It almost reminds me of Dracula where Dracula is an epistolary novel. And so it looks like a collection of papers. And so it's like, Oh, for a minute you could be like, Oh my God, this stuff is real. Mm -hmm. So it gives it that reality, uh, mm -hmm. which is like, it can be even more terrifying that you can just go to this like nice seaside resort. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like fish people <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. So like, yeah, that yeah. So yeah, I think the science fiction part of it is definitely the 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 the, the things that come from the deep or whatever, mm -hmm. um, because they're kind of like a you know a sea creature. Um, but what do you think? What do you think Lovecraft is trying to make us afraid of in that story? Like, what's the what's like the one thing that you think he's just trying to punch us with? Man, I don't know. Um... Yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a really hard question. Um, I have a theory <laughs> that I'll offer. Yeah, you can tell me what you think, but I think it's about, it's a lot of, for me, like reading it, it's a lot about um, like genetic, uh, de uh, like the degrading of your genetics or whatever. So like de-evolution because these people who, yeah, because they're allowing the intermarriages of, this, of the kind of fish people with the regular people. And because of that, you're getting people who live to a very long age or whatever, but they're kind of like, they go into the ocean and become fish mm -hmm. people. And so it's just like, it's this kind of nightmare. And then also the fact that the fish people, um, the way Obed Marsh discovered them, what was it? It was in the, hold on, let me look it up really quick because I have it right here. But it was the, um, where did he, 
where did he encounter the fish people first? I forget. Um, that was, wasn't it in the chapel? Or am I? Um, no. That's kind of where, he the, where he was hearing the noises, I think. Yeah, let me look it up really quick. All right, we got an island. I forget, but it was like they talk about the savages or whatever who had the relation the same relationship obed marsh does now with the, with the fish people um that um let's see oh the south sea the south sea yeah, cannibals okay. and guinea okay. savages okay, okay, okay. So i think that there's something really like racial going on there like that they were associated with that first yeah. and then they come over here and it's like they're kind of intermarrying and intermingling um and so i think that there's like a real fear of like genetic de-evolution and like almost a kind of you know, fear of the the race being, or the humanity being diluted. I don't know, what do you think? That makes sense. I mean, like the, you know, interracial type thing, and then like you're taking the purity out of, you know, you being this race or this race, and then like you're, if you're combining them, they don't know what the future is gonna be like because we've never really done that before. Yeah, and I think that's why the ending is meant to be even more horrifying the fact that he's accepting it right and he's like i'm gonna bust my cousin out of that asylum and we go get in the ocean you know (laughs) exactly and so it's like i think that's what and the fact the fact that like he appears at the beginning to be this like completely separate kind of observer like you know who comes from a good family or whatever Mm -hmm. like he has good stock or whatever Mm -hmm. um and then later to discover that one person who was tricked into marrying someone with was who was from instant was like his great great grand yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that and so it's this kind of like like it, it, it almost is i guess would be the equivalent of back then to being like a white person and then discovering your great great grandfather was like a cherokee indian or like you had some you know african-american blood uh mm-hmm. in your family and it would be like horrifying and i think that's what he's trying to tap into in a very weird way because i find i found that it was like I think the scary part for me was like the part where he's in the hotel um, yeah. and they're kind of creeping. Cause that's like something like, woo, you know, very visible, very real. But I think the overall thing of like him going and becoming one of these creatures was not as scary to me just because I'm like, I guess I'm not as a Latina woman. I'm not too concerned about mixing <laughs> because <laughs> my, my dad is white and my mom is Panamanian. So it's like, I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, what do you think about it? Like, what do you think about like how how did it strike you? I think I mean it's one of those things you just don't want to say. But yeah, it was like that. The racial issue is there. It's that's pretty much what it boils down to. And it doesn't matter if I mean if you take it like I said, it, it's a white man walking into an African American you know neighborhood, and all of a sudden he wants to become that. Like that's not something that you sit there and you know like you talk about. Well, I'm going to be this, you know. Um, and just you, all you do is take it into fish people. Now you just basically yeah. created a new race that we're just talking about wanting to intermingle. And it's not something that anybody wants to talk about. Oh, that's, that's the corner where everybody intermingles. We don't go there, you know? Yeah. It's interesting how, like, I think, uh, Lovecraft is really using sci-fi to talk about these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and to like evoke those feelings of, of horror about like racial integration essentially is what you could say. Um, But yeah, I think it's really interesting how like sci-fi can do that kind of thing for us. So yeah. Um, Let's look at the other, uh, what's the next one you want to look at? So we did, so we did Shadow Mm -hmm. over Innsmouth. Uh, What did you think of uh, Who Goes There? Who Goes There? Um, I had seen this, uh, you know, read the, the, I guess read the book in high school, but I had seen the movie, you know, years prior. Oh, yeah, because you said, like, in the beginning, you saw the thing. thing. Yeah, Um, it's just one of those things that I guess it's like um, like having a friend and you just don't know who they really are when you're not around, you know? Oh, yeah, totally, high school. (laughs) Yes, you know, or, like, you know, and they're trying to, you know, they're listening to your conversations and you don't know who they really are. You know, until and that, they don't know who they really, really are. are until it's like all out in the open, and you have this person that I think was Blair at the end, um, that they've been hiding out in the closet this whole time, and you know, but somehow sneaking in, being the fly on the wall, and listening to all this, and 
<laughs> nasty. So I don't know. It's just like <laughs> it was like a high school remake of the ugliness. I don't know of ugly girls. No, no. I, I mean, yeah, it's like science fiction mean girls. Um, but if you go ahead and so I sent you a link in the group chat. Can you see that on the side of your screen? Let me see. Let me try it again. But because there's a uh, let's see. Oh. Let's see. No, Can you see it? Uh -huh. There you go. All right. So if you click on that, there's going to be a picture in that folder that you can see. And uh -huh. it's actually the cover of, okay, so <laughs> the thing from another world, um, Howard Hawks had this 1951 classic. Um, his creature was initially like that described in Who Goes There? by mm -hmm. John W. Campbell, which we're talking about. And the creature was described as, oh, you can't see it. But the creature yeah. is described as blue skinned with three red eyes, a sucker mouth and stringy hair. And oh, they that, kind of, that's, that's on the face of that first book that you put, I think that you, that was on that link, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. Hold on, let me see if I can share the actual, share, shareable link. I love Google. Here, try that link instead. Oh, it popped there up. It okay. Yeah, Perfect. No, that's exactly I, that's exactly what I remember. <laughs> I wonder how does that compare to actually like your view of the monster, like what you saw in your head while you were reading the story. I didn't. I I don't know. Like the eyes didn't really look like that to me. No. <laughs> no. It's funny because the uh, the the eyelashes are so out of control. Like it's yeah. like almost like a really bad makeup tutorial. Pretty much. Um, yeah. And I think it's interesting that this monster looks to me really feminine. Exactly, and exactly what I just said, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that because I never really because I guess in while I was reading it, like I saw the monster is like really genderless, like that mm -hmm. it can inhabit and become anyone. Exactly, and that's kind of what I always think of some type of an alien out. You know, like it's there's not really a sex to it. I don't ever really feel so. But this, for whatever reason, the thing like came off to me as somebody you just. It's just a scary thing. Like that can be a reality. You don't know who that person is, and they can turn yeah. to anybody and say whatever just to get you to believe that they are or they're not who they say they are. And it's interesting because it's like, do they even have a consciousness of like that they're not this thing that they're be, because it because I think what they establish is that it doesn't just shape shift, right? Like it doesn't just yeah. become another thing. It becomes. The other thing completely and so it's like can that thing even have an awareness that it is not the thing that it has become I think, um, what is it that that blood thing that made them um like where they tested the blood and then all of a sudden they kill them or something and that's yeah, kind of yeah. determining who was who but then they just kind of realized it was like everybody at that point yeah and it's like i don't know it just raises a lot of really interesting questions about like who what makes us us and is it our thoughts? Is it our memories? Is it in our DNA? Like, what is it? And I think that that's what that's playing with, where it's like, uh, it's just so unsettling. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> at mm -hmm. the end, you just can't trust anyone. anybody. Yeah. And yeah. I think that was where they were kind of all like, oh my gosh, am I him? This is kind of off the wagon. But whenever I was little, because I had mentioned before that I wasn't raised with my mother. And so, I, it's like, oh, you miss your mom, you miss your mom. But I've always wondered, am I dreaming? Am I ever going to wake up and realize that I'm, I'm actually with her? So maybe that's what it is. Like, you don't ever know if you're ever truly in a reality. And maybe that's kind of what it's touching. That's so true. Oh, my God. That's so true. I think that that's what it really messes with because it's like, uh, like, yeah, it's that question of identity, because I think so many of us feel like I am me, like I am Jeanette, I am Annette, like I know who I am, don't mess with me. Uh, but it's like, uh, I've been reading stuff nowadays about like memories and how like, mm -hmm. a lot of your memories aren't even reliable the way that you think that they are. And you could, because you could be like, no, I remember it this way completely. Um, and how they can actually implant false memories. Exactly. So if we, so if we are just our memories, then if that can be tampered with, who the heck are we? Like exactly. I mean, I've, I've written a paper about that for psychology. It's just like you don't your memories from you. If you remember this conversation, then I remember this conversation. We can have this totally different recall of what happened. Yeah, so, definitely. You know, and maybe that's kind of what the alien or the elephant is in the room. Like we. You don't know who that person is. They can change their mind from tomorrow to the next day. I mean, look at somebody who gets married 
10 years ago and all of a sudden they're a, t- they're a different person and oh I don't want to be with you anymore you know so it's just you just never really know yeah it's really true and I think that's what Campbell's starting like that's what he's kind of messing with is this idea of like that identity isn't something that's dependable you mm-hmm. know um, mm-hmm. and that's what the thing is able to do because it's able to pass itself off as one of us um, and that's something I mean going back to like invasion of the body snatchers um, you know <laughs> oh you should check that one out it's, it's like po- it's terrible it's like pod people but basically okay. it's like they're coming and they snatch us and then they replace the person with like a kind of with a pod person mm-hmm. um, and it's kind of scary because by the time you get to the people who are in charge that you're going to tell like oh this is happening they're already there and they're like, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> but that, that, yeah, that's I more. I remember that one movie with the Jane, James Vanderbeek. It's like, where you, I don't know, they like get into their bodies or something or their ears James or something. James Vanderbeek. Wait, yeah. are you talking about um, the faculty? I think so. I think that's what. Is that, that, Van- is that. <laughs> Edward, is that Vanderbeek in the faculty? No. They're they're like teachers. And so that, that would be right. The Van- that's the faculty, the one with Elijah Wood. The, the, okay, no. I think, okay. What's his name? I forget what his name is. Hold on. Josh Hartman. I'm talking about the one with Josh Hartman. I think that's it. Okay, <laughs> so, maybe that's it. I, you know what I'm talking about, though. I, I, I don't know why I saw the I don't know why. Okay, whatever. They're two white dudes. Like, I can't tell them apart. <laughs> fine but no yeah i really that's a really enjoyable movie because that's also um like about it's like conformity you know what i mean and like we want you to be happy and it's like you can only be happy if you're part of this hive minded Mm -hmm. organism Mm -hmm. so yeah that's that that one's a real mind trip i enjoyed that oh and funky johnson is beautiful in this movie too i remember oh lord yes but yeah so Maybe it's because of a football movie and I thought James Van Beek. I don't know. That's true. I was like, James Van Beek was not in that horror movie. <laughs> that's how um, good I am with people in movies. That's true. That's true. Um, so if you think like, okay, so if John Campbell is like thinking about like identity, the integrity of identity, what do you think like about, I, I'm going to say it wrong, but the, the, the I'm not going to say the author's name because I'll say it wrong, but the Black Destroyer which became the basis for the movie Alien. That's the one with the, what was the alien called? Uh, Coral? C-O-E-U-R-L? Do you remember that one? What did you think about that one? I, I watched more of the Alien. I didn't really know okay. that part of it yet. So. Yeah, so but this, wa- yeah, I'll fill you in. So this one is like basically uh, A.E. Van Vo- Vogue. Oh, I'm going to mess it up. Okay, this person who wrote it, uh, he wrote it, and then they came out with Alien. He's like, hey, you stole that. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he got, I think he got a settlement for it. Um, but basically in this one, there's like a cat. It, it, it's so strange because it's like a cat-like creature. Um, is that says, why they brought the cat onto the alien ship? <laughs> yeah, which is really interesting. That poor cat. Yeah, but it's like it has a bunch of t- like tentacles or whatever it's an id creature and it feeds it feeds on what it calls id but it's actually uh phosphorus um and it like sucks it out of human bodies and it's really i I get i I can see why he said they stole it from him (laughs) it's because it's interesting but he like sucks it out of their bodies and it's like he meets with a bunch of people who are on his planet and he's just like nope i'm gonna totally like i'm gonna like pretend like i'm a good alien or whatever and i'm gonna but i'm gonna like suck your phosphorus out and so that was kind of it um i can see how they would like i can see how with like alien how they could take it from the story and kind of expand it but i think hr geiger is the one who really kind of took it off and and went from there with with at least with the the design of the the creature. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what do you think about Alien? Because you said it was like part of that basis of science fiction uh, yeah, horror for I you. Yeah, I kind of um, You know, I rewatched it and I was like, I really don't know what I was so scared of. 
Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, was it the big alien? <laughs> Probably, but it's like they show him like what, maybe a total of ten minutes the whole movie. Yeah, but, that, you know, that's really effective. Um, but I think it's just like you know, you're you're going to this plan, or I think what what really, and I think I had forgotten about it was that when Ash tur turns out to be like an android, and you're just like, whoa, what like, happened? Yeah, and then I thought that he had already, I thought he had it inside of him because of the way he was reacting. Yeah, like wailing around like a crazy person, and then when he, they chop him open, and he's like with all these like bold things, and I'm like, oh, he's like an android or a robot of some sort. <laughs> so, it's funny because I think you seem to be like interested more in when someone is something that they do not appear to be. I, th I think that has a lot. I think yeah. that's the theme. Oh, yeah, that's that's the theme. Probably, that told a lot about me, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I think that's what's really great about literature and horror in particular um, is like you kind of what you're afraid of in a story can tell you a lot about yourself. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, yeah. It's it's really interesting. I think that's why I love I love literature and ended up getting a, a doctorate in it. Um, but yeah, so like with Alien, um, there's a lot to unpack there. Like in terms of fear, um, just the you know, oh, the the whole process of the alien itself. Like I I, I think I'm 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 curious why you were less uh, afraid on the second viewing than you were when you were a kid. I you know I think just. It's just one of those things you kind of know now that what you know what what the difference is of what you're supposed to be scared of, but um, I mean there was parts that I kind of knew it was going to happen, but I, I was still kind of like freaked out about it. Um, I, I don't know. I think I think it's just because you know she's going to survive. Maybe yeah. maybe those are all the things that you know there you know there's a sequel like one of you know all those things that kind of go with it that you go in knowing, but when you come in not knowing about it, it's like whoa. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because one of the I saw one of the students is going to do a paper on alien and the design of the creature, mm -hmm. um, and he got into a conversation with another student about the alien sexuality or whatever, and he's like, oh, "I don't want to talk about the alien sexuality." I was like, "But please, let's do because it's like horrifying." Like in terms of if you look at Geiger's work, uh, it's he's very much like he. He uh, he likes to blur that line between gender and sexuality because mm -hmm. uh, the you know the alien itself it's very like she's a, a woman like it's a female like the mother alien right but she's got that huge thing that like shoots out of her mouth and it's very phallic it's very kind of sexual and terrifying mm -hmm. um, and then like the face hugger right which which is basically like it has like male and female parts right because it's got that opening and then the thing that shoots out the ovipositor that like kind of impregnates its prey and then the you know the chest burster scene that everybody yeah. knows about where it's like yeah. that's basically horrifying because it's a man giving birth to something which kind of um, plays into what we talked about last week was it the blood blood craft or blood child blood, blood child yeah. oh god that story messes me up every time because that's like that's borderline horror <laughs> yeah, i know yeah it's funny because i put it I, I debated whether or not to include it with horror because it is kind of horrifying but it's more kind of like about the symbiotic relationship like it's mm -hmm. just almost touching horror and i thought it was a good lead-in to the horror week yeah i agree um, i agree yeah because i think it's interesting I, that that cool story aliens involved and stuff so i guess it's not really like all about kill 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 <laughs> yeah and that was like the hard thing about aliens where it's like that's why i involved i i put like war of the worlds with it too because mm -hmm. i think all the other ones that i had were like aliens is kind of like benign creatures because i think we see we think alien and we think foreign bad kill mm -hmm. it's gonna hurt us and so i think but that's not like aliens by themselves are not a are not horrifying i think it's just um how they're used essentially um and i think horror uses the alien to like bring up those fears of like what is beyond me <laughs> like what else is there in the universe and is it going to hurt me so. and that's that's what i had written down about um the sci-fi and horror that it made it the sci-fi within horror making that subgenre it kind of had it almost like gave sci-fi a bad name to where it, it kind of discredits it, you know, and I, that's what I, maybe that's kind of where I've always thought sci-fi is horror, like where they would yeah. make a name for themselves and like yeah. have relevance and then you bring in horror and then it just kind of like, oh, it's fake, 
you know. Yeah, I think for I think what you're touching on something really important, and it's about it. It's it, science fiction is cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like you know, uh, I think we can call Jurassic Park in some ways science horror, which is yeah. a movie that I love. But it's that idea where it's like science getting to the point of doing something and not asking before they do it if they should do it. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, like, that is <laughs> like, do you remember the Hedron Collider that they were, that they were all set up to start or whatever? Did you ever hear that in the news? Mm -mm, mm -mm. What happened with the Hedron Collider, hun? It was like they were starting it up and they're like, this could create a black hole. We don't know. But let's turn it on anyway. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I hadn't heard like, about that at all. I feel like science fiction, the goal of science fiction is to think about, like we've talked about this the first week about science fiction, how it's mm -hmm. like a, an imaginary lab, essentially, like to think about like if instead of stopping, we actually just made those de decisions mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and we got screwed. <laughs> yeah, because that, that was, like you said, back in that first week, it was just like, oh, wow, like it really does kind of have like a predicted, you know, thing going on there where they like kind of show things of what could possibly happen, but then eventually they do happen. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, why do you think, why do you think, uh, so science fiction, you know, it's, it's, it's a expansive genre. Why do you think horror works so well with science fiction or what, what do you think makes it work so well in movies specifically? Cause you were talking about alien. What do you, um, what makes horror work so well in movies? I think it's because it's something that's already scary and unknown. And then you add that, you know, scare something just like a monster type thing, which is still unknown and really scary. And you're able to combine those things and then add science to it to make it almost real. Yeah, I agree. I'm looking up this uh, this YouTube video really quick because uh, why media scares us? Here it is. I'll go ahead and share it with you, and you can watch it later. But, uh, yeah, I feel like science fiction just is able to expand the world of what we think is scary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Because I, I feel like, you know, if you're looking at the horror genre, especially nowadays, there's not a lot of the, well, I guess, like the Insidious series and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to, to horror, it's really just like a guy with a chainsaw or like there's a lot of realistic horror. There's yeah, not a, yeah. a lot of, you know, stuff. And, and I feel like with science fiction, it's just able to kind of expand the world of what you can be. Like if I you can make scary. <laughs> like as if I didn't have enough to be afraid of, you know, mm -hmm, like let's mm -hmm. put it in space. So mm -hmm. yeah, I send it to you right now. You can watch okay. it later. That one's about how media scares us, specifically how film is able to like frame things. And he talks about the shining. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. It's interesting like when you get that background, how you see movies completely differently. Well, that was, that was like Lovecraft when he made that his own universe. And it's like it's cosmology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like bananas. I don't, I, I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, William Blake, he kind of had his whole thing, but he was a, he was a romantic writer. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's like a whole cosmology, like the, cause he talks about it in the shadow of Romans, but he talks about the Shagoths, which are basically creatures that are just all eyes. Really? It's terrifying. And then Cthulhu, I'm sure you're familiar with. He's the tentacle guy. Mm -hmm. He's the, yeah, he looks like the, he actually looks like the guy, Bill Nye from um, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I was say that. I was yeah, he's just, got, he's just got the tentacles and everything. And so, yeah, I think Lovecraft kind of went one step further and was like, okay, let's not only create a monster, let's create an entire cosmology of fear mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of right underneath uh human experience and human reality so yeah is there anything else you want to say about horror you seem to be a fan which is fantastic i, I really do like scary movies but it's kind of like what you touched on last week and you're when you with your uh your blog with the last student um when you were talking about um what was the movie the story of your life whenever they're like oh do you dream in this or whatever 
I was I was listening to you guys and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so me. Like I can't do math problems without going to bed and dreaming about math. You know? That's so true. It's very I, true. It's so bad that I had a surgery and I woke up from anesthesia and I was like, there's math problems all over the world, like all over the room. And it's because I was on, you know, really good medicine, but I was like, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I was like, whatever it is, take me out because I don't want to do math right now. It's amazing. It's amazing how the brain works and like there's a lot of stuff about this, like about how like, um, you know, like the more, the more you use a neural pathway, the stronger it will get. And um, the less you use it, that will actually atrophy. So they've talked about like um, integrating meditation. So say somebody has like consistently negative thoughts about themselves, those neural pathways are going to be stronger. Um, but if they practice self-compassion, um, over time, those pathways will break apart and die, and the new kind of self-compassion neural pathways will be strengthened. And you can do that with meditating and with sleep, because when you sleep, that's when your brain is actually doing the the protein synthesis to actually like make your memories. Mm -hmm. And so it's like if you can't, it, it's just amazing what you can do with your brain. It's it, your brain is very plastic. So yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. Alrighty, well, I think we're done talking about horror. Um, I want to go. I want to go watch a scary movie now. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and stop the broadcast, and then uh, we can talk after. So, all right, bye, guys.